Well, good morning. Good to see each of y'all here. Hope you're glad to be here. Amen. Amen. Good. Um, need to be in prayer for those that are hurting, that are not about. Uh, I know we didn't announce it, but need to be in prayer for Jim's daughter. We prayed for her. Need to be in prayer for Amanda's mother. Uh, and there's others, I'm sure, uh, Jr. and his family. Um, just lots of people we need to uplift. And uh, so, and that's part of our passion. That's or should be our passion, and and have compassion for those that are hurting and those that are suffering. Um, you know, it's beginning to be fall time, and on the calendar, and the days begin to get shorter, and the last of the crops are getting gathered, whether they're green tomatoes or hay, or a few last ripe tomatoes, or a few last purple hull peas or whatever you gather and it's coming down to a winding down time of the fall gather your pumpkins put your corn stalks up whatever it is it's a fall time it's it's a time of gathering down and celebrating the harvest well so as it is on the jewish holidays a time of harvest so as it is in our christian walk a time of harvest and when you when you begin to harvest things and it's choices you make did you plant seed and if you planted seed you've expected it to grow and you've harvested a crop the seeds being planted in the word of god and you don't just it don't just come up it's got to be planted and as a church i feel like we're taking on efforts through many means to call and reaching out and facebook but as we go about to evangelize and share Jesus Christ, to hand out crosses and share Jesus Christ. And I think all those things are important because if we can't reach a lost and dying world, they're not going to come here. We're going to have to go to them and reach out to them and reach out to those that are hurting. And, and it's all about choices you make. Uh, and it applies to harvest. You choose what you're going to plant in your garden. Or you choose not to plant a garden. Or you plant a garden and you choose to give up on the garden. Or you choose to take care of it to the end so that you get a harvest. So what I'd like to begin sharing with you is in the gospel and in the, in the, in the word of God is in Galatians chapter 6. And I'll simply ask you one question as I, before I read. Have you shared Jesus this week with anyone? Just a simple question. I'll ask you next week too. And there's a reason I'm asking you that. Um, and a lot of us expect a lot of things. And some people, most people expect something for nothing. However, it doesn't work that way. But in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, let's begin there. It says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his presence in our lives and in the world and in the word. Lord, we just pray that we use your word to effectively share your love and what you died on the cross for each of us, for the forgiveness of our sin, that we're debt free. Lord, help us that we have enough compassion and love to reach out to those that are dying, that have no hope. Forgive us of where we fail and be with me as your messenger today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So when we talk about time of harvest, and those of us that have been taught, and those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's not a club that 
when it's not a club that you join. It's a family of God that you become once you accept Jesus Christ. And it should be our desire to share that with somebody else. Not to say, hey, look what I got and you can't have it. That's not the attitude we should have. However, God says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Talk to you about planting a garden, and if you plant peas, you get peas. Unless somebody's mislabeled your seed and you can't recognize what it is and you get uh, turnip greens. Of course, there's a big difference in a pea seed and a turnip green. You kind of know what you're going to get. My question to each of you is, what seed are you sowing? And you might say, well, this or that. I'm not sowing nothing. That's what you're going to reap if you're sowing nothing. If you're sowing love, the love of Christ, the Word of God, that's what you'll reap. If you're sowing worldly pleasures and fleshly desires, that's what you're going to reap. You will reap what you sow. What are you sowing? And, and that's an important question to ask because in verse 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. You're going to reap corruption if all you sow to is flesh and what fleshly desires and what you want. It's not what I say. It's what God said. That's what you're going to get when that's what you sow. And you've seen people do things and they were bad to other people and and then all of a sudden bad things began to happen to them and the statement is it's good enough for you. You got what you asked for. And that's how we look at it. I, you got what you asked for. I've seen news articles this week, and I've had many com people comment. They get what they deserve, and probably more. And they ought to get what they deserve, and what they, and maybe more. And we all deserve to die, because none of us are righteous, no, not one. We all deserve not to go to heaven. But that's not the way Jesus looked at it. He said if we accept him, we have the right to enter the kingdom of God. It's not what we deserve, but that's what he promised. However, he said if you do not accept Christ, you do not have a right to enter the kingdom of heaven. So what have you sown? What are you sowing in your life? Are you sowing fleshly desires? Are you sowing spiritual seed? Or maybe you got a mixed garden. You're sowing both of them. And oftentimes what happens is when you sow to the flesh, you lose sight of the Spirit. The Bible teaches us to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. But when you sow spiritual things, you reap life everlasting blessings, eternal blessings, things that will never go away. How many of you wish if you were planting a garden that you only planted it once and you had it forever. Didn't have to work the weeds, didn't have to do... Man, that dude was there, and once you got it, it constantly produced. Hey, man, that's a garden I want. God tells us it's that way with spiritual things. When you sow spiritual seed, and you get spiritual blessings, and you reap a spiritual harvest, it's eternal. It lasts forever. And, and, and as I said last Sunday... The fields are white. The harvest is ready. And it's because we're afraid to say these, three, these few words. Is Jesus your Savior? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Or if you died in five minutes, where would your eternity be? Folks, we're afraid to say those words. Why? It would be like saying, I'm afraid to put the pea seed in the ground because the birds will come eat it up before it sprouts. And, and, and that's just a fleshly seed. God has a power that you can't explain. He has a Holy Spirit. And when you sow those seeds, they give life and eternal life. And yes, some get taken away and some, some get weary and... That's why he said to us here in verse 9, 
And let us not be weary in well doing. Folks, don't get don't don't give up. God didn't give up on you. He doesn't want us to give up on him. But if we do what he says, God will do what he promised. Are you doing what God asks? Are you sharing fleshly seed or spiritual seed? Are you spirit showing loving seed? Or are you sowing selfish seed? He says, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity. How many opportunities have you missed this week? I'm not asking you to do anything different than what you did. But have you had opportunities to share Jesus Christ? Have you had opportunities to pray for somebody that was hurting? Have you had opportunities to help somebody in need? Have you had opportunities to see those that were lonesome? He said, let us do good unto all men. <coughs> do good to everybody. Not just some people, but especially unto them of the household of faith, especially your church members, especially your fellow Christians. If they call, do you go help them? Drop what you're doing to go help them. We ought to especially do that for them. But at the same token, we ought to do it for a lost and dying world out there that doesn't know Jesus at all. Let's go over in the book of Proverbs just a minute, if you would. Proverbs and chapter 22, verse 8. And he, what I'm telling you is you're sowing something out there, folks. And I'm going to try to reiterate that with other scriptures. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. If you're sowing sin, if you're sowing iniquity and your vanity and your vain fleshly ways, and the rod of your anger shall fail. You're going to fail if that's what you're sowing. It doesn't, it doesn't help you to get angry as you serve the Lord. It's not going to bless you because you're angry. It's not going to improve your life. It's going to make it worse. And in the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 8, Even as I've, I have seen that they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. What are you plowing? What are you sowing? Folks, you're going to reap what you sow. And as a tractor or a farmer or a push plow or a tiller, anything you have to do to begin to work the garden with a harvest requires attention, requires time, requires effort. God, yes, the tiller will do the work, but you have to put gas in it and you have to use it. And what are you plowing? Are you plowing iniquity, vainglory? Are you plowing anger? What's the seed you're sowing? What are you plowing? What are you working so hard for? And once you've worked so hard to get whatever it is, what's the eternal reward of what you're receiving? I know people work hard all their life. But when you die, you know what you take with you? Nothing. You came in this world with nothing and you will leave this world with nothing. Did you leave love? Did you leave Christians behind? Did you leave Jesus in the hearts of many? Look over with me in the Gospel of Luke chapter 6 now. Luke 6 and 38. 
It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met with it shall be measured to you again. Are you a taker? Or are you a giver? Are you giving to others? Are you compassionate towards others in your giving? God says, and Jesus said, when you give, it'll be returned to you in good measure, pressed down, more than you gave. I'm not preaching give and receive. I'm preaching God will bless you when you give with a right heart and serve Him. The rewards are eternal that you receive. The things that you receive in this life are temporarily fleshly and vanity, but oh, the joy of knowing someone came to Christ. The renewing of your faith, the renewing of your heart, sharing that gospel message, not just going through the gospel motion, but with a God that's powerful, that's working, that's alive, that's within you, and you're seeing him do what he promised before your eyes. But you can't see that if you're sowing fleshly vanities because you're chasing something that's never going to satisfy you. You're chasing a desire that can't be fulfilled. You're looking for that longing that's emptiness inside you. And it's not going to be filled, y'all. You can't feel it chasing worldly desires. Go with me over again in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 11, verse 18. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. What are you sowing, folks? If you're coming up feeling empty, you're coming up void it says the wicked work of this, the wicked work of the deceitful work deceitful it's not the truth you're leading doing a work that's fictitious you're doing a work you think that is good and it brings nothing But the work of serving the Lord and sowing righteousness is a sure reward. Sure. Sure. What are you sowing? Are you showing, sowing the sureness of Jesus Christ? Because there are sinners out there that have a debt they can't pay. They have a burden they can't fulfill or get past. They have an eternity that they can't receive with Jesus Christ unless they receive Jesus Christ. Jesus assures us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he will set you free. And he also says, therefore there is no condemnation in those in Christ Jesus. It's a sure work. It's a sure promise. It's not a maybe. It's not an if. It's not, I hope so. You know, I hope it rains soon. Are you basing your eternity? Or are you going to let somebody you care about base their eternity on? I hope I go to heaven. Folks, I don't like that answer. I hope I go to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven because Jesus is my savior. That's the answer I like. That's the answer Jesus hears. That's, the, that's what Jesus promises us. I hope I'm doing good. I hope I'm sowing good seed. Folks, that's not good enough. It's just not. You know, I hope I, I, hope I can get a garden without planting it. It don't happen that way. None of y'all come planting my garden for me. 
I'm not grabbing, okay? I'm just making a point. You have to sow those seed to reap a harvest of lost souls. And you can't expect someone else to do it for you. Because if someone else does it, it doesn't help your reward. It doesn't build your faith. It doesn't let you know God's working. It doesn't help you understand God's promise. It doesn't build your relationship with God. Folks, it's important for each one of us to know Jesus personally and trust what he does and what he says and how he goes about doing what he does. Look in Psalms 126, verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Have you shared, have you sown a tear for anyone other than yourself and self pity? Folks, when you get a desire in your heart and God puts that there and you, you've, you've surrendered to him and you said, Lord, use me. Help me to sow seeds of righteousness you'll begin to have those tears that will bring you those tears of joy. Brings joy to the church. Brings joy to the individual that shares those tears of sorrow. That share those <coughs> tears of humility. I, if you've never led somebody to Christ, you don't know what I'm talking about. And if you've never done that, I encourage you to do that if you have Jesus as your Savior. You'll say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Tell them exactly what you did when Jesus came into your life. And if Jesus, if you've never done that and he's never come into your life, you can't share what that's like because you don't have it. If I told you what it's like to cut off my big toe, you might sympathize with me, but you won't know what it feels like not to have a big toe. And not to have a big toe makes it harder to balance. And not to have a big toe changes your life. And I can say all those things because unless I lose my big toe, I don't really know. I kind of sympathize with that fact, but I don't personally know. People sympathize with the fact that Jesus saves them. People sympathize with the fact that he died for their sins. And people kind of understand mentally that he died for their sins. But when they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, oh, the joy that changes their life eternally it's not sown in vain it's not sown in vanity and I have a lot of other scriptures that I could share with you but you don't want to be not sure and if you find somebody that is not sure we need to encourage them through God's word that they're sure that they're sure of what Jesus did on the cross that they know Jesus pays that sin debt that they know that they have an eternal life with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. I'm going to close with two, scripture, two more scriptures. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 11. I'll get there in a minute again. Verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. The liberal soul shall be fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Not only when you share Jesus Christ with a lost person, it'll water your soul too. It'll bring you joy. It'll relight your fire. Is your fire almost out? Are you almost, almost 
not burning. Let Jesus light your fire. Share him with someone else. Watch it ignite the joy in your life. Watch it ignite your faith in God. Watch it change your life. You see, you pursue all these things that bring disappointment. But as assuredly as I stand here with you, bringing someone to Christ will always bring joy. It'll bring new life to you and to them. Not because anything of us, but because what God's promised us. And he's promised you. And he's promised all those that are lost and all those that are undone. Look with me in James chapter 3. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. What is that wisdom? Where does it come from? It comes from God. And when we share that wisdom, it's pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's easy to entreat, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality. Folks, as you begin to ask and to share the gospel, and if I were to ask you to do that, would you do it with every person in here before you quit? Don't leave one out. And as you share the gospel in your daily life, ask everyone. If they're saved, they won't be offended. If they're lost, they have a chance to become saved. At least you were presenting Jesus Christ. You know, because I've seen people and they go along and they'd ask two or three and skip six. Then the next person go by and the very next one you skipped was the one that came to Christ. How would you like to be the one that somebody skipped? And you were needing it every much as much as anyone else. And then we have this issue just like Jonah did, and I'm going to close with this. I don't like them. I hope God judges them and kills them all. That's why he thought about the Ninevites. I ain't going. And Jonah was sent to go. But he went anyways, and he, and he did a poor excuse of a message. And then they got saved, and it made him mad. Folks, don't be, don't be a Jonah. Don't let God get a hold of you to make you go. And don't be un, un, ungrateful when God saves lost souls. Because Jonah thought he would do the least he possibly could, but it wasn't about Jonah. It was about Jonah doing what God said. And I want you to understand as we go out, it's not about you and me. It's about us doing what God said to share that gospel message. Let us stand and we'll have a song of invitation. If God's spoken to you, He's asking you to move, to do something. As I asked you at the start of the message, who has shared Jesus at least once this week? I'll ask you next Sunday, did you share Jesus at least once? As we sing. Number 121.
thank you all for being here. And I'll leave you with one last example. If I went down to the feed and seed store and I bought the seed, and I brought them home, and I had the ground tilled up, and everything ready, except I didn't plant the seed. What kind of harvest do you think you would have? You can come to church, you can read God's Word, the ground be ready, and never sow a seed, and you'll reap no harvest. Thank you for being here, and I pray that God bless each of you. Um, David, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer?